Hey everyone, today I'm having a look at the Gigabyte P67A UD3PB3. Now I've actually had this motherboard sitting around for quite a while. It was for a client build that didn't end up going ahead. I know it's been out for quite a while and there's probably plenty of reviews out there about it, but I thought I'd just do a little review on it anyway. I'm sure some people will be interested. This motherboard has the Intel P67 chipset and socket 1155. Okay, now just a quick look at the back of the box for some of the motherboard's main features. Alright, so 108 decibel signal to noise ratio, high definition Blu ray capable onboard audio, also dual BIOS. Gigabyte 333, which is basically just USB 3, SATA 3, and the USB ports are capable of putting out three times the power. Two times the copper in the PCB, 12 phase power, driver offsets, which I'll talk about shortly. Dual CPU power, Power Engine A and Power Engine B, which I'll also talk about shortly. On off charge. So the USB ports are capable of charging USB um, battery devices when the system is switched off. Alright, so one of the big features from Gigabyte is Ultra Durable 3. And this basically just means higher quality components all round, which brings a whole bunch of benefits. Time to have a look at what's included in the package. Back I.O. panel. Four SATA 3 cables, two of them are 90 degree on one end, the other two are straight. User manual, installation guide, also a driver's disc, don't use this, go download the latest drivers from the Gigabyte website. Also this safety information. Alright now for a close look at the motherboard. Starting in the top left hand corner you can see the 8-pin EPS CPU power connector. Above that is a 3-pin fan header. Moving across you can see the 4-pin CPU fan header. Across from there is the memory slots. So this motherboard supports up to 32GB of dual channel DDR3 memory up to 2133 MHz. There's another 3 pin fan header. Below that is the 24 pin motherboard power connector. Moving down, you can see the SATA ports. The white ports are SATA 3 and the black ports are SATA 2. RAID actually works across all of these ports because they all come from the P67 chipset. They're all on the same controller. Just below that is the motherboard's dual BIOS. You can see the two BIOS chips there. This is an extremely handy feature in case something goes wrong with one of the BIOS chips. Below that is the front panel connectors and also you can see there a front panel USB 3 header. Across from there is three USB 2 midboard headers and in the bottom left hand corner of the motherboard you can see another four pin fan header. So that's for a total of four fan headers on this motherboard. Two three pin and two four pin including the CPU fan header. Moving up from there I'll just move slowly so you can see all the components in detail. So there's the front panel audio now for a look at the PCI slot configuration. So at the top we have a PCI times 1 slot, then a times 16 slot, two more PCI times 1 slots next to the CMOS battery, then a PCI Express times 4 slot and two PCI slots. This motherboard supports Crossfire X but not SLI. The top slot will run at times 16 whether you're running one graphics card or two graphics cards. The bottom slot is only times four, so if you're running Crossfire X, you are only going to get times four out of the bottom slot. The other thing is that the PCI Express times one slots share bandwidth with the times four slot. 
So if you're running anything in the times one slot, then the times four slot will only run at times one. Underneath this heatsink is the Intel P67 chipset. Moving up for a look at the CPU socket. So this is socket 1155. It supports any 1155 Sandy Bridge CPUs. So this motherboard has 12 phase power. And as I mentioned earlier, it has what Gigabyte calls dual CPU power. The power phases are split into 6 plus 6. Power Engine A and Power Engine B. The reason for this is that when the CPU is under light load, it will only use six of the power phases. And the motherboard will actually swap between Power Engine A and Power Engine B to increase the life of the power phases. When the CPU is under heavy load and more power is needed, it will use all 12 of the power phases. Gigabyte has included another technology which they call driver MOFSET. They've incorporated the MOFSET with the driver IC which means 50% reduced mounting area which means more room around the CPU socket. Also higher power transfer, higher switching frequency and higher power efficiency. Gigabyte's Ultra Durable 3 means high quality components all round. Two times the copper in the PCB means that the heat is spread across the PCB more evenly allowing for cooler and more stable components. It also acts as an improved EMI shield which reduces electrical interference. Also Japanese 50,000 hour solid state capacitors and ferrite core chokes. One more thing that comes under Ultra Durable 3 is lower RDS MOFSETs. This means less heat generation from the MOFSETs and fa a faster switching frequency. Just a quick look at the back of the motherboard. So you can see that the heat sinks are actually held down with plastic clips instead of screws. The color scheme of this motherboard makes it look like a high-end board almost everything is black. The heat sinks look great as well with the blue accents. So you can see the MOFSET heat sinks are low profile so there shouldn't be any problems with CPU cooler compatibility. They also have a large heat pipe running right through them. Now for a look at the rear I.O. panel. Starting from the left we have two USB 2 ports and a combo PS2 port. Then we have an optical SPDIF out and a coaxial SPDIF out. Then two more USB 2 ports, another two USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports. So that's for a total of four USB 3 ports, two on the back panel and two midboard. They run off two Renesis D72 0200 chips. Okay, then we have another two USB 2 ports. That's for a total of eight USB 2 ports on the back panel. There's also another six USB 2 ports mid board. So that's for a total of 14 USB 2 ports. They all run off the Intel P67 chipset. Then we have Gigabit LAN which runs off a Realtek RTL 8111E chip and Realtek ALC8898 8 channel surround sound audio. So that sums up this review. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you want to see more.